You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome edition of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I am Robin. We certainly hope that you consider it to be uh, awesome. Um, it's definitely our goal. And we appreciate all your questions. AskDroneU.com. Show doesn't happen without your questions. We need you, we want you, and we love helping you. So uh, get those in. Definitely get those in. Uh, we've got a great question today, which is really talking about the best drone. We've got a caller who came in or called in, got one of the jobs kind of what we've been talking about for a resort. And uh, he's got a very good question, which um, is so relevant because if you really ever work in a mountain town or with a coastal town, uh, you get this particular issue that comes up all the time in regards to what marketing managers, what they want to see, uh, and, and how do you accomplish that? So I think today's, uh, show, which might be short, would probably be also extremely valuable for any of those of you who are trying to solve this particular problem of getting the mountains or the background to really become more prominent in, in your imagery, whether it's photo or video. How do you accomplish that? So we're gonna talk about that today. Anyway, um, our show is brought to you by our landing pads. They are back in stock. Whether you need a mini landing pad for the Mavic size drones or smaller, or you need the DroneU mapping landing pads, they are all back in stock now. Get them while they last. And uh, it shouldn't actually be very hard to sell whatsoever because there is no better tool for marking GCPs than those mapping landing pads, but it also protects your drone. It's a great surface to work on. Uh, and frankly, I heard Ongood told me this uh, just yesterday that he still has his drone U landing pad at his uh, at his Brink desk that it serves. Does he really? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. well, it's kind of like a massive uh, mouse pad if you still use a mouse. Is this, <laughs> this is true. This is true. This is true. That's uh, awesome. Uh, on that bombshell, let's get right into today's question. If you want to join us for a mapping class, we've got some hitting the site and we've got some virtual classes. Make sure to check them out or become a member at thedroneu.com. Hey, Rob, Paul, Jordan here from New York. Love listening to the show. Got a question for you today. I just booked a gig um, for a resort and they want more of a, a different focal length for the photo and video needs. They want to bring the mountains and the terrain to feel closer to the hotel. So in traditional photography, that'd be more like a 50 millimeter, 70 millimeter, or, or 100, you know, telephoto type lens. I was thinking of renting the Mavic 2 Zoom, but curious to know what other options are out there to get something that's not as wide as the typical Mavic 2 Pro or other drones. Curious to hear your thoughts. Awesome, Jordan. Thank you very much for the question. AskDroneU.com is where Jordan went to ask his question. Before we get into an answer, I just wanted to, as we think about, or as listeners think about questions they can ask us here, I want to remind people or let people know that you're really getting heavy back into action sports and flying over water and, and doing a lot of stuff with um, professional wakeboarders and things like that. So if you've got any of that action sports curiosity, send those questions in. Those would be really great questions. We haven't talked about a lot of that stuff in quite a while. So that's a really powerful uh, and important point um, because I will say, you know, there is uh, a lot of power in the skill to fly and these action sports are really test your skills more than anything else. So I, uh, yeah, I love flying action sports, frankly. And as many of you know, I've been getting back into boat commercials, excited to be back on uh, with the Centurion team. So thank you to Centurion and their marketing yeah. team. Greatly, greatly appreciate what you guys are doing for me. I know it's uh, mutually beneficial, but it's something that uh, brings my heart great joy. So Yeah, and frankly, action sports is one of the more fun things to practice. And what I mean by that is just even like going to my parents and getting my kids on their four-wheelers and pulling the drone out and trying to stay with them, that's fun. 
practice. So there you go. Anyways, you know, it's, it's a great cool. way to to engage and interact with the family. That's actually a solid, that too. solid yeah. point. I wasn't even thinking about that, solid but point. you're right. Yeah, no. It's, Anyways. Um, All right. So Jordan, what do we got for him in terms of how to make the mountains look like they're uh, in the backyard? So, I mean, I, this again, this is a very common issue, Rob. All marketing managers want this because they really want to accentuate the landscape, the environment of these resorts and showcase the overall experience, right? This is kind of our goal as a uh, video photographers as photographers um, to ensure that we uh, provide the absolute best possible uh, media and capture to showcase that experience. That said, I hesitate on the answer of using the Mavic 2 Zoom. I've got one literally right behind me here at the Adronio HQ in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, but my answer would be kind of dependent on how much he charged because I uh, I've been running into two types of students, the underchargers and the uh, aggressive chargers. And I, I, I like the aggressive chargers. <laughs> Much prefer the aggressive chargers. Uh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> uh, because we've been talking for so long about, you know, your, a lot of people say, oh, well, the market uh, yields whatever you can charge. That's true to an extent. I think it's true for bigger companies, for macro environments, uh, macro uh, like verticals, et cetera. But I would say for most of the small businesses that that people are helping, I would say that that is the furthest thing from the truth. That if your ability to sell lies within your self-worth, your self-belief, uh, and how much confidence you have. Um, and so I say that because what was the price point that this guy charged for the resort, right? We're not going to know that because he, he didn't, uh, he didn't tell us. So that said, let's say that he's got room to run in his budget to either rent or purchase an Inspire 2. Um, this is a phenomenal example of the flexibility and versatility of the Inspire 2. You know, all the time we've talked about the best drones to start your drone business. We've talked about the Phantom. We've talked about the best drones for fo uh, photography and videography. And we've talked about the Mavic 2 Pro. And then we've talked about drones that are overall offer the most opportunity uh, you know, in one package. And that's an Inspire too, right? You can do mapping, but you can also do the high speed action sports stuff. Mm. You can do, uh, you know, the, the, um, you have the power and stability to get the shots that you need on the move to make them smooth. Right. So the Inspire 2 really offers the most flexibility. And this is another macro example of why you want an Inspire 2. I personally would not use the Mavic 2 Zoom or Enterprise in this particular example. Why? High-end client, okay? High-end client, what does that mean? They probably want sunset or sunrise, right? They want color in the sky. But if, if they don't, you should tell them that they do, right? Because your shots are going to look better. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred yeah, percent. Yes. Um, or upsell it if, if you can't. Uh, and that said, when we talk about the Mavic 2 Zoom sensor over the Mavic 2 Pro sensor, you really have an extreme deviation in sensors uh, and especially the quality. And then when we get to low light and we talk about sunset and sunrise, you're really going to see the difference in those two sensors at that point in time, which is why. 100% I would recommend the Inspire 2 with the X7 because the X7 look there's four lenses right you you buy the X7 it's three grand it costs more than the drone now okay but you get one lens you buy one lens I've got the 16 millimeter the reason I have the 16 millimeter is because it has the built-in ND filter okay I really like that all right, especially when I'm out on the water <laughs> where ND filters are necessary. Um, but what I love about it is like when I shot Balloon Fiesta last year or two years ago, uh, why do I love this camera? I can just go rent a 50 millimeter DL lens that fits on the X7 and I can get that background to push in. Mm. And I love the look myself. But even here's the thing. As you zoom in, you really kind of degrade the quality of the sensor anyway. Right. Um, and you can see the difference on a 50 millimeter and a 16 on the X7. You can really see the difference. But you're going to get a much higher quality photo than you would with the Mavic 2 Zoom or the Mavic 2 Enterprise. But as I was sitting here talking about this, uh, looking at my notes that have nothing to do with this show, uh, I was just thinking about, you know, Rob, you had... Uh, an amazing experience with the Mavic 2 Pro, right? <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> Rob's like, oh no. Oh no. oh no, what is he setting up? We already did this show, Paul. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, I'm talking about 
the time that Rob crashed the Mavic 2 Pro, okay? Oh, it's one of the scariest moments of the last couple of years. It's, it's I was okay. going to say my life. <laughs> the last class that I taught with Josh, I crashed that same Mavic 2 Pro on the beach in San Diego. So um, Tough little booger. It, re- it really is. <laughs> uh, and there's one thing that I learned in going through that drone, the post-crash maintenance with that particular aircraft. And if you remember, it was realizing how simple and easy it is to actually do a gimbal swap. So if this particular collar is Hmm. budget... uh, Constrained? Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. If he's budget constrained, then what I would do is I would go online and I would find a broken Mavic 2 Zoom. And you know what I would do is I would buy that thing. As long as the uh, gimbal and camera were still outputting an image to the remote, I would buy it. Here's why. I would take that drone apart. I would take the four screws plus the ribbon cable, or I think it's eight screws plus the ribbon cable, and take the Mavic 2 Pro gimbal off of my Mavic, strap the zoom on there. He's probably going to buy it for three or four hundred bucks. Boom, problem solved. Okay. That's only if this resort paid him a very small amount or he's, uh, he's he's doing a loss leader, for example, right? Can't spend the money on the Inspire 2. Or he's trying to do this as a uh, uh, an example for what he could do for other jobs, like a real builder almost, or yeah, something to include uh-huh, in real. Yeah. So, but I think he had mentioned renting a Zoom. I would say stay away from that. Rent the i two. Yeah. If he's gonna rent, just go for the i two. Get the X seven. Get a fifty millimeter lens and just go for it because. Um, you know, he, here's what I keep coming back to. This is, this probably sounds so weird, but here's what I keep coming back to. I've looked at zoom photos that I shot in Mexico and when I can't adjust the highlights and the shadows very much on that sensor, cause it's such a small sensor. And when it comes to the highlights and the shadows on the X seven, even on a 50 mil where I'm cropped in on that sensor, I still have so much room to play with the highlights and the shadows to really drive that robust sunset look, right? Yeah. I can do that with the X7, can't do it as much with the uh, with the Mavic 2 Zoom. That said, if he's you know budget constrained and he's limited, I would hack the thing, take the gimbal off, throw a new gimbal on his existing Mavic, and uh, just go ham. And so, everything will work in terms of controls and so forth? It'll mm-hmm. be just fine in that sense? It's so weird how the, huh. the, the remote recognizes the gimbal and then changes the user interface. That's incredible. Yeah, wow. By the way, by the way. people are smart. (laughs) I took the Zoom camera off of the Enterprise and put it on the Mavic 2 Pro, and it worked. You did? Yeah. (laughs) Didn't know that. Why? I have no idea why. It just worked. (laughs) No, no, no. Not why did it work. Uh, Why did you do that? Because I wanted to see if it would work. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there are benefits to being a tinkerer. (laughs) Well, man, that's my problem is I feel like I have all these microcosms of these different character sets and I have to like choose every day which one I want to entertain, you know? Yeah, I guess you could say it's a problem. It's But it's manageable and there's a lot of benefit to it. So anyways, we're going to stay positive. We're going to stay positive here. That's pretty cool. So anyways, your best case solution for him is the uh, Inspire 2. With the X7, I with would argue the 50 millimeter, or maybe even closer lens. I think if he's got the money, that is the best answer. Yes, if he doesn't, I would say he's already got a Mavic 2 Pro. Find a broken to zoom, switch out the gimbal, do that. Uh, it, it is a risk, right? Um, if he can't do that, I would say rent the Inspire 2. There should, someone should call in with a question on, hey, what should I do to a rental drone before I fly it? Because there's literally a laundry list. Uh, no, really, like... Wink, wink. No, like, yeah, like, <laughs> literally, I've seen so many uh, almost crashes because of this particular issue. But if you do rent a drone, make sure to update the firmware, flash the IMU, uh, do a compass cal, and then uh, I would actually run through all the settings that are in our Don't Crash course, our operations course, um, because you do, especially with an Inspire 2, look, all the settings are in a different place. So if you're not used to flying an Inspire 2 and you're up in the air and you're like, oh! <gasps> wait a minute, I forgot. Okay. It's going to take you a lot longer to find that same setting. (laughs) Okay. It's in a very different menu system. So anyway, that said, uh, you know, be cautious when you rent drones. Um, and I would also photograph everything about the drone, uh, before I fly it just, just for liability sake. But anyway, I hope this really helps you. Um, 
Look, man, let's also celebrate the fact that you are now flying a resort. Great job. Yeah, for, for sure. Ev- for everyone else out there, this is motivation, right? If you aren't spending the time to go out and get the jobs, who is? Who is, is the, is the question. And instead of wondering who, it should be, that's right, you. All right, on that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. Rob, that's all I got. You got anything else? I'm good. All right. Thanks again for joining us. Send in those questions. Ask. DroneU.com. Drone <laughs> 